Hello, I'm James Randi. Currently our email at the JREF and at the internet is filled with the news that James McCormick, the man behind the farcical ADE-651 device that is being used in terrorist-sensitive areas to sweep cafes, theaters, guarded checkpoints, military posts, police stations, and other facilities for explosives, has now been arrested and charged with fraud. He's made literally millions selling these fake sticks, yet he's been released on bail. Now, the very best thing we can hope for is that he'll bolt to escape prosecution, become an international fugitive, and be found on an island somewhere in the Pacific. I need to set a few facts straight here, however. Yes, I specifically offered McCormick the JRS Million Dollar Prize long ago. He chose to ignore it, as we predicted he would. But the media have reported that, and I quote, In 1995, the Sandia National Labs and the FBI raised the alarm over a dowsing rod device called the Quadro Tracker, which they described as a fraud. And the FBI warned all agencies should immediately cease using the device. Close quote. That is quite true. But you should know that the McCormick device is quite the same as all the other fakes, including the Quadro. And the actual procedure by which this FBI action arose is a bit different. I was the one who alerted the U.S. Department of Energy, the DOE, to the Quadro rod, which we'd already tested at the JREF with an operator certified by Quadro using it. Need I tell you that it was useless? The DOE then turned to Sandia Labs in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and commissioned them to do tests on the Quadro. The Sandia examination of the device revealed that there were no functioning parts inside the thing, and that it failed very definitive tests that they performed. Not to my surprise, the media chose to ignore this finding, as did the CIA, the FBI, and any and all U.S. government agencies and authorities. Then I got a call from the FBI. Though they'd ignored the Sandia DOE findings, they'd learned that one of their retired agents had purchased a franchise from Quadro authorizing him to sell the device in the state of Florida. That got FBI attention. One of their own was being victimized. The fact that other American citizens were being swindled didn't get their attention, but a retired agent did. Well, they moved in on Quadro, and within 48 hours, Quadro was closed down. Why could the FBI not have acted similarly to protect the rest of us? I even got a phone call from an amused FBI agent while they were searching the Quadro offices, who told me that they'd found nothing inside the Quadro rods but a lump of hardened epoxy with very dead ants embedded in it. I think that man might have directed his attention, not his humor, at the guilty parties who were never charged. Ah, but the media just today reported, and I quote, In 2002, a test by Sandia Labs in the U.S. found that a similar dowsing rod device called the Mole Detector, M-O-L-E, did not work and performed no better than a random selection process. Close quotes. They concluded that it did not work and that it looked nearly identical to the Quadro tracker. Au contraire, mes amis, that was the Quadro. You see, after the FBI raid, Quadro went out of business, then moved to the UK and went back into business as the Mole. They simply scrubbed off the Quadro name and replaced it with the Mole logo. This was the same useless device, the same fraud, but with a crowning glory. Her Majesty's Royal Engineers bought several of the moles and employed them to find smuggled IRA arms. Hearing this, I promptly sent a formal officer to the Royal Engineers, offering any of them the JREF prize if they could detect anything with the mole. Strangely, they refused my offer. Hmm. Why, I wonder? But back to Baghdad. A senior Iraqi officer involved in bomb prevention has defended the ADE-651. Major General Jihad al-Jabiri, 
who appeared at a press conference with Mr. McCormick himself following a disastrous bombing in which the area had been swept by the AD-651, said that he didn't care about Sandia and that he knew more about bombs than Americans. He said, and I quote, Whether it's magic or scientific, what I care about is it detects bombs. Oh, really? Well, you fat-ass general, why did you subsequently pass on the specific offer I made to you to correct the JREF Billion Dollar Prize? We were prepared to call upon qualified persons in Baghdad to conduct such a test so that you and your flunkies wouldn't lose any wand-waving opportunities. Now I have to wonder, could it be that there's been an arrangement whereby you're the one handling the sale of these fake devices at a vastly inflated price and at the cost of the lives of militia and civilians? Just a question. Curious minds want to know. Hello, General? Now where did he go? He's running, folks. He's running. They all run. Now while I'm very happy with the fact that James McCormick has finally been snared by law enforcement, I have to make this appeal to everyone to see that he is firmly prosecuted. He has a fortune from which he can employ the very best lawyers. He can pack up and flee. Let's see that this fraud pays for the grief, the loss of life and despair that he's brought to his customers. And maybe, just maybe, authorities out there will now choose to consult with the James Radley Educational Foundation, right here, or other such agencies who can provide them with advice, data, and expert opinions on the quack devices on which our government and others squander so much money and facilities. I'm James Randy. We thank you for watching this latest episode of James Randy Speaks. For more of James Randy and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randy.org.